Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. Good morning. It's good to see you all here this morning, and it's nice to see some visitors here this morning that um, met in the parking lot. It's good to see each of you. Thank you for coming, and um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for his sacrifice on the cross. And those of us who know you this morning, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins that we have been able to experience and enjoy. For those who are among us this morning, Lord, who have not yet experienced that, we thank you for their presence with us this morning. And Lord, we pray that you would make us a blessing to them today. And Lord, that you would minister to each of us. Thank you, Lord, for Sunday school. Thank you for those teachers who study each week and provide something from your word. We thank you for our classes, Lord, for the people that you bring out faithfully each week. And Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for all these things, but we come to you too and we pray for our brothers and sisters who are sick and who can't be with us this morning. As we do that, Lord, we remember Christina Ramos, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you would be with her in her hospital room, and Lord, that you would help her, Lord, as she lays there and undergoes testing, Lord, we pray that you would give the doctors and nurses wisdom, and Lord, that you would help them to treat Christina. We pray too, Lord, for our brother Phil, and we thank you for Phil and we thank you, Lord, for your hand being on him this week as he's had surgery. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with him, Lord. That you would keep him positive and optimistic. And, Lord, we thank you for the evidence of your spirit that we see in him through his attitude towards suffering. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray that you would... Be with us, Lord, as we read it. Father, that you would help me to be a blessing to your people this morning as I deliver the message. Father, I pray that I would speak clearly, simply, and in a way that people would understand. Be with those who will listen, Lord. Those who are facing challenges and worry and turmoil in their life. And Lord, I pray that you would make this message blessing to them especially. Thank you for this opportunity, Father, to preach and to bring your word. Thank you for the patience of your people in listening. And now we leave all these things with you in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I want to read this morning from the book of Psalms, and it's Psalms 46. And it goes like this. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar and kingdoms fall, but He lifts His voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations He's brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth, and He breaks the bow and He shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. 
The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is a psalm, and, and it's a psalm that we actually looked at it not too long ago in Sunday school. And it's a psalm that is very familiar um, to me, and, and I was introduced to this psalm very early on in life. And as a, as a preacher's son, as a, as a pastor's child, I remember leaving uh, church on many Sunday evening, usually, services and, and I remember there'd be seven of us in the car and, and, and oftentimes my dad would have to stop by the hospital to visit with somebody who was uh, in the sick bed. And, and I remember that oftentimes he would take one or two of us into the hospital to visit with that sick person. And I often remember how things went. There'd be a little bit of chat right at the beginning and finding out the details on how that person was doing. But it wasn't very long before Dad would bring out his Bible, and he would open up his Bible, oftentimes to a psalm, and many times to this particular psalm in Psalm 46. And, you know, I can remember as he read that, that psalm to that oftentimes scared, um, worried, sometimes a bereaved family, it seemed to be a, a, a real comfort to them. A comfort that could be brought with the, with the conversation that preceded it, but only through God's Word, and, and it seems especially through this psalm. And these experiences <clears throat> that, that I had had when I had watched the, the comfort that this psalm had been to that bereaved or suffering person, they, they, they stuck with me. And it's often a psalm that today, when, when I have opportunity to go and visit the hospital, when I went yesterday, in fact, it was a psalm that, that I read to a lady there in the hospital, and the effect is still the same. It seems to bring a real comfort to the person to whom it's read. But it's also a passage of Scripture that I have found personally helpful. It's when there's been challenges or, or obstacles in my life. I think of um, especially two occasions where I was able to, to open up this psalm. And it's been a real blessing to me in my life personally. And it's been my prayer this week. That as we look at this psalm and as we talk about it. That God will make this passage a real encouragement to anyone and everyone who may find themselves in trouble this morning at church. And when we look at the passage, we see that it's David who's, who's writing this psalm. And we'll all remember David because early on in his life, David was faced with a big problem. He was faced with a, with a big obstacle and he, one of his first big problems was, was when he stood to face that giant Philistine. You remember it was Goliath. And Goliath was only the beginning of the giants that were to come in David's life. Yes, David was a man who knew what it was like to stare at a big, scary giant. David was, was a man who knew what trouble was. David knew what, what changing circumstances were. And as you look at the Psalms, it, it seems that, that David often suffered from depression. David, as we know, most of us, he's like us. And he knows what it's like to fall into the temptation of sin. And he knows what it's like to be under attack. And what I'm trying to say to you this morning is that David is a man. He's a human being, just like you and just like me. And if David was here this morning, David would say, hey, I'm just a person like you and I put my pants on one leg at a time. That's the message he'd have for us. He's a man who lives in the real world. He faces challenges. He faces obstacles. 
He faces scary things, just like you may be this Sunday morning in the seat where you're sat. And here in Psalm 46, David is having a bad day. I wonder, is there anyone here this morning and you've ever had a bad day? I wonder if there's anyone who knows what that's like. I wonder, is there anyone who's had what we might call one of those days? And you know, one of those days, it may go something like this. You wake up a bed and you, and you roll over and you look at the alarm clock and you see that it's 7.12. And it's Monday morning and you realize that you should have been at work 12 minutes ago, hit the time clock. And uh, you, you spring out of bed and, and you run over to take a shower and, and you bump your little toe on that sliding glass door as you try to, to step up and step into the shower. I wonder, is there anyone here who's ever done that? Amen. And you hop into the shower and, and you go to quickly take a quick clean up and you, and you grab the shampoo, but there's nothing in it. You ever been there and you have to fill it up with water and shake it up real good and, and use the suds? Well, you rush down the stairs after that, after getting your clothes on, and you nearly break your neck as you rush down the stairs, and, and you pour out your cereal, and, and you dump it into the bowl, and instead of grabbing the milk, you grab the orange juice, and you dump it all over your cereal. Well, you rush out then, you can't have breakfast, so you jump into your car, and, and you drive down the road to work. You glance up in the mirror, and you've got a meeting at 10.30, and you glance up, and you realize that you forgot to shave. And it's too late. You've got to go on to work anyway. Well, you speed things up and you just don't realize how, how fast you're going. And, and you look in the rearview mirror again and all you see is the blue light. The policeman pulls you over and you plead your case to him, but he doesn't seem to understand um, the situation that you're in. You finally get to work. You're disheveled and you look like you got a hangover. And you try to quietly go to the time clock and ease into work. But who is it that meets you there at the time clock but your supervisor? He just happens to be there with his coffee. A man, he sees you there and he's able to put four letter words together in one sentence that you've never heard put together in your whole life. He's livid. He's so upset with you. He's so mad. And you work hard all day. Finally, it's time to clock out. You go and you hop into your car. And, and you go home. And you turn the key on your door. And you open the door. And the baby's screaming. And the, the, the dinner has been burned. You get into it with your spouse. And she runs up the stairs crying and slams the door and locks it behind her. You walk into the kitchen just to see a card there with your name on it. You open it up. It turns out it's your 10th wedding. 10th year wedding anniversary. Man. You go and you sit in your living room and you turn on the TV and isn't it the truth? You just you feel like giving up. And you feel like, how could things get any worse um, for me? You know what? Sometimes those days can turn into weeks. Sometimes they can turn into months. And sometimes they can turn into years. Well, this psalm, Psalm 46, it's born in that exact context. That's what's going on here in Psalm 46. And the message in this passage to us this morning, the message to you and to me is, God is our instant help when you don't know where to turn. God is your instant help when you feel like you're trapped, when your back's against the wall, when you feel like you're all tied up, when you feel like you're in a bind or when you're in a narrow space. And in fact, that's what that word troubled means here in the text. It means to be restricted. It means to be tied up in a narrow or in a tight space. And that's exactly where David found himself in the psalm. You see, the walls, they were closing in on David. 
And he says this morning, he says, when you're in trouble, if you're in trouble this morning, he's saying to you, he's saying to me, here's the message. And it's important to realize that, you know, he's not some young punk who's just running his job on. He's not some punk who's just um, loves the sound of his own voice and, and who, who's just given his, his pennies worth or saying his piece. David's not a guy who hasn't lived or experienced anything. In fact, David here in Psalm 46, he is coming out of the depths of experience. He's coming out of the depths of despair. And the summary to us this morning is God is your refuge and strength when you are beaten up by life. He's saying when you've been bruised. When you've been battered by the world outside, he's saying that he is your help. He is your strength. He is your very present help in time of trouble. He's saying if the bottom end of life seems to have fallen off for you, if you feel like you're dropping and you're falling, if you feel like you're on a, a free fall, he's saying remember that God is building up a place of refuge for you this morning. And He's surrounding you with His great, big, loving arms. I wonder, is there anyone who's like that this morning? Is there anyone who finds themselves there this morning, trapped, helpless? Well, if that's the case, then I thank God that you've come. Because God has a message for you. And what He says to you is, He says, in the middle of your mess, Perhaps you feel like you're going to suffocate. He's saying, look to me. I am your refuge. I am your strength. And I'm going to help you through this thing, my child. And that's the message for you this morning. And he wants you to take that message and apply that to your situation. I don't know what your situation is this morning. Just as you don't know what my situation is. But I wonder just for a moment. Think about that for a second. What is it that you're leaving behind at home this morning? What is that thing that's waiting on you when you come home to your house after church? What is that stress at work that you have to face on Monday morning? What is that nightmare that's crept in to the life of your family. Think about that for a minute. What is your situation? God says. I want you to hold on for a minute. He says. Hold, what, hold on to what you got. Because I want to tell you. That I'm a great big God. And I'm sitting right next to you. He's saying. I'm preparing a place of safety. For you and my great big loving arms, they're wrapped around you. In the passage, in verses 1 through 3, we read about natural disaster. Um, we read about an upheaval in nature. And, and the response is in this passage, we will not fear. We see also in the, in the next verses, it, it's a civil disturbance. Because this city is a city that's under attack. And David, David says, his response is, that God is in her. She will not be moved. And as the psalm goes on, there is what well, one commentary describes as post-battle fatigue or weariness. And the response to that is seen in verse 10. And it says, be still and know that I am God. And just very quickly, I, I want to go over each section and I want to try to, 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 to gain some help and, and to pass on some encouragement to anyone here this morning who's in trouble. And the first is in verse um, 3. We read about natural disaster. We read about um, disasters and and, and, and things that are going on. And this, this may mean more to some here this morning than it does to others. You know, you may be here this morning and, and you, like me, you have, you have never experienced a tornado coming through your neighborhood. 
you haven't experienced a, a, a hurricane. There'll be a few people here because of where we live who have experienced earthquakes. But volcanoes are probably something that all of us are um, unfamiliar with. But although we may be ignorant to first-hand experiences, the truth is in the year that we live in, we all have the internet. And we definitely all have TVs. And we've been able to turn on our televisions and, and see those disasters that constantly trouble other lands and other states. It seems like more and more often today, we turn on the TV or we, we look at the internet and we see the havoc and we see the upheaval that natural disasters wreak. We've watched this last week of Louisiana. We've seen the floodwaters there as they, as they rose. And we have seen 30,000 people, 35,000 people that had to be rescued. We've seen people going down the freeway in Louisiana on, 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 in John boats. Yes, we've heard of, of loss of life there. We've watched on TV and we've seen tsunamis sweeping away cars, sweeping away entire communities and neighborhoods. We've watched the earth split open and, and, and earthquakes swallowing sometimes hundreds of people. We've watched images of volcanoes opening up and violently and, and fiercely throwing out red hot rocks and oozing lava that scolds anyone and anything that it comes in contact with. But what David says here is, he says, even in the midst of all that, he's saying, even in the midst of all this, I'm not going to fear. Even though the world falls down around me, I'll not be afraid. <coughs> maybe you're here this morning. And maybe you can't relate to those types of troubles. You know, it's one thing to see them on TV. It's another thing to experience these things firsthand. But there's someone here this morning. There must be somebody. And your world is caving. There must be somebody here this morning. And it's all coming down on top of you and, and no one on your right or nobody on your left will know about it but, but you do. And all those things that seem so permanent in your life, the mountains that surrounded you, the road that your feet walked on, they're all falling down all around you. It could be any number of things. It could be a relationship. It could be a career. It could be a marriage. It could be your health. It could even be your funds. It could be your faith. And this morning, this morning you're in the middle of troubled waters and the waves are tossing you around and it's coming up around your ears and it's splashing all around you and you think you're going to sink. The winds are shaking you. The storms are scaring you because everything that you trust in is cracking and breaking under your footsteps. The mountains are all falling before your eyes. You're in a crisis. You're in a state of emergency. And this morning the load feels to be too heavy and you think that you're going to go under. You think that you're going to sink. Well, brother or sister, God is speaking to you this morning. Amen. And He's pulling alongside you this Sunday morning and He's saying to you, look, my child, I am your refuge. I am your strength. I am your bridge over troubled water. I am your shelter from the storm. I am your strength in this trouble and I'm holding on to you and I'm not going to let you go down. Amen. And He's coming alongside you this morning because He's going to help you. He's saying, child, I am your refuge and I am your strength and I am your very present help in trouble, but I need you to trust me. I need you to trust me through this thing. Amen. And if that's your situation this morning, if that's where you're at, 
If your world is turned upside down, if the tables have been flipped over in your life, then I want you to be reminded of verse 1. And I want you to keep on reminding yourself of verse 1. God is inviting you this morning to rest in His eternal embrace. And He's saying to you, hey, I'm a great, great, great big God. And I've got great, great, great big arms. And He's saying they're around you. They're underneath you and they're beside you. They're above you. And I'm not going to let you go out like that. Amen. In the passage there's also a civil disturbance. In verses 4 through 7, David talks about the nations. He talks about the kingdoms. He says they're rising up against his little city. And they're wanting to destroy his little city. They're wanting to demolish it. They're wanting to murder its people and to wipe it out. But in verse 5, David reassures himself. And he says, in my little city, God is in her and she will not be moved. Amen. David says, when his city is under siege and I'm under threat, I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to shake. One translation says, I will not totter. Why is that? Is that because David was so strong and such a great warrior? Was that because he had confidence in himself? Because after all, he had, he had put down that giant all those years ago. No, that wasn't it at all. The passage says, because the Lord of hosts is with us. Amen. That was David's assurance. That was where his confidence was. He says in his little city, God was inside of her. And I want to assure you this morning... Young person here this morning who feels challenged at school, I want to assure you that God is with you in that challenge. Older person here this morning, God is with you too. If your faith is under attack, I want to assure you that God is in you. Maybe you're not aware of it. Maybe you've forgotten it. Maybe you can't see Him. Maybe He seems like He is so far away. Well, He's with you. He's with you with that struggle at home. He's with you with that, that challenge at work. He knows about that boss who, who despises you. He's with that trouble. He's with you with that trouble over your faith. And He's with you. And He's with you this morning. And He's going to help you. He says, hold on. Just hold on. You know, when I, was, when I was younger, there was a show that used to come on, and I was trying to think of the name of it. I think it was Rescue 911. And it was like the first reality show that, that, that came on. I don't know if you had it here. We had it in Georgia. But uh, Rescue 911. And, and what it was was these calls that would come in to the dispatch. And I remember watching that, and one time in particular, they'd, they'd play the calls and they'd be inactive. And I remember one time in particular, there was a mother who had a baby. And she had that baby and, and she was coming in from the car. And, and this, this stranger, this madman came and approached her. He had a knife and he was shouting and he was screaming at her and how he wanted to kill her. And the lady took her baby and she ran into her house. and She was just in time to close the door and to turn the deadbolt. She thought she was safe. But the man, the madman, began to beat on the door. Beat on the door so hard that she thought that he was going to come through. She ran upstairs and she went into the closet. She closed the door behind her with her baby. And she had her, her cordless phone. And she called 911. And then the call began. And that lady told the person what the problem was. And she explained to them that somebody was breaking into her house. And there it all was on recording. And you could hear the terror in the woman's voice. And the lady, on the, the dispatch lady got all the information. And she says, ma'am, I just need you to stay calm. I just need you to stay on the line. But as time went by, the guy came through the door. And the lady screamed, he's in the house. There she was, hidden in the closet. And she said, he's tearing the place apart. He's screaming that he wants to kill me. And there... There he was going through the house and she's still on the other end with the dispatch. And the lady's saying, ma'am, I need you to stay calm. I need you to stay on the line. 
And as the man's voice got louder over the phone, the lady's voice in the closet got quieter. She said, he's in the room. And you were sitting in your living room and you were grabbing onto the seat. You were thinking, oh God, please send somebody there. The lady says, they're on the way, they're on the way. I need you to stay on the line. And all of a sudden you hear a scream. You hear a bang. And pop, pop, pop. And the blue boys in blue had arrived. The problem was solved. The lady was in safety. And her and her baby were free. And this morning, this morning somebody here should hear the sirens going. You should hear the sirens going and, and what God is saying to you this morning is, He's saying to you and He's saying to me, hey, help is on the way. He's saying, I'm coming to help you and I'm going to keep on helping you until we see this thing through. Amen. Somebody here says, you don't have a clue. You don't, you don't know what's going on in my life. It's, it's overwhelming. Well, look at verse 6 quickly. Nations are in uproar. Man, they were red hot. They were furious. The anger was coming out through their ears. And everyone was against David's little city. Everyone wanted to destroy it. There was no one that was there to, there to help. But what do we read in the passage? He lifts His voice and the earth melts. Brothers and sisters here this morning, one word from God and He'll take care of everything. One word from God and evil falls. One word from God and the whole show is over. Amen. And if you're here this morning and you're under attack, the Lord is on your side. The Lord who has the great big armies is on your side. The God who has the great big guns is with you. The God of His people is your stronghold. He's your safe place. He's your refuge. He's your strength. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. He who is within you is greater than he who is within the world. Amen. And in the middle of all these threats, in the middle of all this violence that we read in the psalm, look, look, there's a word that we, that we missed out on. It, it says, Selah. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but there it is. And you know what? That word appears only 70 times, over 70 times in the Psalms. What does it mean? It's a musical instruction. And what it means is, stop. Pause for a minute. And think about that. And that's what I want you to do this morning. Pause. In your trouble. And think about what we've talked about. God is your refuge. He's your strength. He's a very present help. A very present help right now. In times of trouble. Amen. He says. Be still. In verse 10. What he's saying to you and to me is he's saying, he's saying, hey, I'm a great big God. The Bible says that if, if, if I had feet, then the world would be like a footstool. He says, you're so small. The Bible says we're just like grasshoppers. What God's saying is he says, hey, you know, you think you're strong. You think you can take care of things. But look, you can. He's saying, hey, why don't you give that thing over to me? Let me handle that lightweight for you. Hand that thing over to me and, and feel that burden lifted and let me take care of that thing for you. That's the message this morning. And He wants you to apply it to your situation as I apply it to mine. Amen. We're getting ready to sing the last song, but as we sing, the deacons will come forward and I'll be at the front as well. And if there's anyone here who finds himself in trouble, who's in need of prayer, that's why the deacons are out here, to pray for you and to bring your petition before the Lord and to try to encourage you and to try to, to strengthen you. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not a Christian. You don't know anything about...
God being a strength or a refuge? Well, He can be that to you this morning. And I invite you to come out and to speak to somebody who can guide you and who can direct you. You know, this is kind of a strange Sunday morning, but maybe you're here and you want to join Orangeburg Avenue Baptist Church. And you want to become a member with us and, and get into the work. That's the opportunity that's before you as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you for your people. And Lord, I pray that you would take this word, and Lord, that you would bless it, and Lord, that you would help us to remember that you're so big, and you can take care of our troubles. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.